So as we left off talking about oxygen sensor heater circuits, right? And heater testing we did on Friday, which was in part on my bike. And we'll, we're going to maybe reinforce that a little bit too as we continue for this part. But in this segment, what I want, wanted to talk about was bias voltage of the oxygen sensor and then heater circuits. And I know we introduced that on Friday with my bike, but we didn't finish it. So page 10 in section 6, no, where are we at? 5. Chapter 5. Chapter 5, page 10, I have listed here possibilities of issues when you have no signal change from the oxygen sensor. So let me back up a page or two just to get our perspective here. What we left off talking about previous was signal fixed rich on page four, signal fixed lean on page five, and at the bottom of this I said to compare tailpipe uh, down here, I'm, I'm looking down here. Um, if the O2 millivolt is fixed lean and CO is high, sensor is lying, check the O2 heater power and ground and O2 ground before replacing. On page four it says something similar. That we're looking here. If O2 millivolt is fixed rich and CO shows normal to low, the sensor's lying, check O2 heater circuit, O2 signal, and grounds for opens and shorts before replacing. So that's where we are on this page. You guys understand the title. Um, O2 signal fixed with no response to ratio changes. We good? This would be 5-5. Five five five. Five. Just divide it in half on these slides. So I have seen on this list of, of possibilities all of these issues with oxygen sensor fault codes and drivability issues related to the oxygen sensor. A bad O2, short to ground in the signal wire, an open signal wire, heater circuit problems, sensor ground problems and computer ground problems, I've seen all of them set oxygen sensor fault codes. So a manufacturer is going to have you use an ohm meter and ohm the circuit for opens and shorts and I want to teach you guys a faster, better, more accurate way. So voltage drop test, PCM response testing, scan data response testing and then bias voltage is what I want to teach you guys starting with bias on page 11. O2 sensor signal bias voltage. What is it? Uh, we've talked about bias voltage before in outputs, if you remember. In our output section, when a <coughs> solenoid was unplugged, do you guys remember that conversation where we have this voltage coming from the computer to the, the sensor and, or solenoid, and it tells us whether or not we have opens or shorts in the circuit? Well, we have the same thing here that the computer's actually sending a small voltage to the sensor. And I'm just wondering if I should show it to you first before we continue. Because my bike actually has it too, which I was surprised to see on Friday. When you guys left, I was looking at my motorcycle a little bit more and there was a voltage that was there. Um, what's the best way for me to do this? Show it. I want to show it to you, but I want maybe introduce it first on paper. I don't know. Let's look at this for a second. I'm going to jump down to page 13. And this was on a Nissan that had an issue with the oxygen sensor. And what I want to point out in this picture is this section right in here, which is there's zero volts, there's one volt, looks like about a half a volt. So Remember the 450 millivolt number we talked about previously? What is that? That's that set point. Numbers above 450 rich, numbers below 450 is lean. My concern on this Nissan was that I had a wiring problem. After looking at the O2 moving up and down and then flatlining lean on me with no response to ratio changes, that's kind of where we titled this section. I tried making a rich condition by adding propane, it wouldn't react, and so I'm worried about the O2 being faulty before replacing the O2. I'm also worried about a harness issue, and what I did was reach down and unplug the sensor. So my computer would sit here, it's a heated O2, 
I won't draw the rest of the wiring, just the signal circuit, and I'm measuring at the connector with a graphing multimeter. That's the picture that you're looking at right here. In this part, I disconnected the sensor, and I'm reading that voltage. What does that tell me about the computer and the signal wire? There is a small bias that's being sent down this line, in this case, around 450 millivolts. What's that tell me about the computer and the wiring? It's good. It's good. It's good. And really, that's the point of this. The rest of it, as far as how it's doing it, isn't as important as the why. The how part is different with every vehicle. There are some that don't even use a bias voltage at all. Okay? Ford, for example, there is no bias. So if we go back to page 11, I have some of that listed. Chrysler or, or GM, I have 450. Chrysler around 500. And then 5 volts cold. That, that's kind of strange. A 5 volt bias. Nissan, Honda, 400 to 500 millivolts, Ford, no bias at all. Let's talk about this Chrysler one for a second. Oh, you know what? I'll use this opportunity to show you what some of this looks like on a wiring diagram too. If you see, if you see a resistor with a line through it, and then something like this, it's being drawn inside of the oxygen sensor. Which one's the heater? Which one's the signal circuit? This would be Mitchell diagrams do this. The heater would be the bottom and the signal would be the top. Yeah, this is your heater down here. And this would be your signal circuit up here. Okay? So on Chrysler designs, the signal and the signal ground or signal return, those both go back to the computer. The heater, though, goes straight to ground, and this comes from an ignition positive source that would be on a Chrysler, the ASD relay, which stands for auto shutdown. But the point is, you see that the heater circuit is not monitored at all by the engine computer. It's externally powered, externally grounded. But OBD2 states what about oxygen sensor heater circuits? They have to be monitored. There's a specific O2 heater monitor on an OBD2 system. Okay? So if you look at global OBD2, there is one of your readiness monitors is actually the oxygen sensor heater. Not just the oxygen sensor signal circuit, but the oxygen sensor heater has to be monitored. How is this in any way, shape, or form OBD2 compliant? On paper, on the diagram, it's not. But what Chrysler does is they send a 5 volt bias down the signal circuit, okay? 5 volts. It's kind of strange. You'll look at scan data on a Chrysler with the engine cold and you'll see an O2 millivolt reading or O2 voltage that would be listed as and it will say 5 volts on the scan tool. And you'll look at that and you'll be confused. The reason that that's there is the computer is sending that to the sensor and when oxygen sensors are cold this resistor element this guy right here if I were to take an ohm meter end to end what would it read with a cold it would read O L M ohms which means what it's an open circuit okay there's no continuity through an oxygen sensor signal circuit when it's cold. Not that this was designed to be a variable resistor, but it is, in a sense. If I heat this oxygen sensor up and do the same measurement, I don't remember what the number is. Maybe uh, it's a few thousand ohms. So it's in the k-ohm scale. It drops from open down to a few thousand ohms of resistance. So the point is that resistor circuit resistance changes with what? With 
with temperature. Okay. So what the computer wants to see is you start the vehicle up and the ignition circuit provides power through the heater and it has a ground so this is this is warming this sensor up and what it wants to see is the resistance of that signal circuit drop in X amount of time and when it does that what happens to this 5 volts is it drops down very quickly. Bef this will be before the oxygen sensor is even hot enough to make a signal and react and do what it normally does, which is the rich lean 0 to 1 volt stuff. If it sees that 5 volt drop down in X time, what does that tell the computer about the heater circuit? It's good, dude. So you understand what the bias is being used in this application. It's used to monitor the heater circuit of a non-heater monitored O2. Did I say that right? Sure. It's not monitored directly. Can you guys see that the heater circuit is externally powered and grounded? It's not a direct monitor of the heater. Mm -hmm. Yet we can still do heater circuit monitoring by looking at this bias voltage. What happens to that bias when the sensor warms up? It's the 5 volt on this one, this one gets pulled down. This one's kind of complicated, but I believe Chrysler actually switches that to around 500 millivolts later with the engine hot. But the bias is very weak, and I'm, I'm going to show you this in a minute. But the signal going rich and lean, if there's a half a volt bias there, it just kind of floats with the signal. You won't see it at all, as long as the sensor's working. If you were to disconnect the O2 with the, with the engine hot and then measure that wire, you would see about 500 millivolts. So back to this Nissan, do you understand my thought process here with this wire that was concerned about being shorted to ground? By me disconnecting the sensor and reading this, what's that tell me about my signal circuit from the sensor all the way to the computer. It's good. You see how easy this is to use? Okay, what about a car that, I think I, I wrote up, one of my worksheets I did for you guys was a bias voltage one. Did anybody do that one yet? Wasn't the second one an O2 bias voltage um, check? Or it wasn't. I think I mentioned it. We'll have to do one of those. All right, so I have a video or two with this. You guys definitely want to watch them. This is a cold and hot sensor. What's that? It's a cold sensor, initial amperage. Oh, no, that was amperage for the heater circuit. A little bit different. On page 12, which would be 5 6. There's a video I'm referring you to here, this GM oxygen sensor test. What I was doing in this video is on the scan tool, I had an O2 millivolt reading of 450 millivolts and it was constant, it never changed. Running the car stayed at 450. So in that scenario, my concern would be, here's my O2, there's my PCM. My concern is with the wire or the sensor. So there's a couple things you can do, a couple ways we can attack this. But what I did in the video is using the scan tool, I disconnected the sensor and I grounded the signal wire. I used a test light to do it, but I grounded the signal wire. And when I did that, my scan data changed to zero millivolts. What's that tell me? about my harness, computer to sensor. It's good. It's good. This is a difficult topic to talk about because there's electronic stuff in here that we're not really sure how they're working that, but what's important is you understand how we're using it. It's not important that you understand the operation inside of there. What is important is that you guys know how to use this circuit to your advantage to save you time and make you accurate. Okay, so on the test tomorrow, I will ask you what the O2 sensor bias is used for. 
And there's really one simple word that you could say. Diagnostics is what it's used for. There's other purposes I have read. It has to do with the analog to digital conversion inside of the computer. I won't disregard that, but for us, our oxygen sensor bias is diagnostic purpose. So let's review page 12 and make sure we're comfortable. This one has a scan data test, and I have O2 signal fixed at zero. The second one is O2 signal fixed at 450. So start, starting with the zero one, if I have a fixed zero volt signal on the O2, Darius, think about your four that you guys were working on, and Alec, and Joe, and were you on that too? It was my car. Was it your car? Josh. Um, you guys had a Ford that had a basically zero volt signal all the time on a Ford. And we were looking at that, I don't remember, was that on the scan tool or was that live? It was both. Okay, so scan, let's use the scan data because that's what I'm, I'm doing here is a scan data test. So on Ford we had an O2 millivolt, and it, was, it wasn't quite zero, let's call it 30 millivolts. It was something like that, it was fixed all the time. If I'm working on a vehicle that has a bias voltage, let me back up. You guys understand this fixed low signal could be a bad O2, it could be a lean condition, and it could be what else? A short. It could be a short to ground in the wire, pulling the signal down all the time. Okay? I guess you could make the argument of an open in certain circumstances if you're using scan data. So we did our propane enrichment, it didn't react on that Ford. And for the rest of you, it was a fixed lean O2, and we were concerned that we had a lean condition or we had a bad O2, and what we confirmed with our propane enrichment is we had what? A bad O2. A bad O2. It didn't react. So what I would do in this case, if it was not a Ford, we didn't do this because it's a Ford, I would disconnect the O2 and look at my scan data. That simple. What should we see when we disconnect the O2 on a vehicle that has a biased voltage? A small amount. Yeah, if it's a GM, it'll jump up to 450 millivolts. If it's a Nissan or Honda, same thing. And if it does, how's my wiring from the computer all the way down to the sensor? Good. You guys understand, I didn't even use a voltmeter or, or a scope or anything. I'm just looking at scan data. It could even be generic global data on a cheap scan tool that I'm looking at and I unplug the sensor and it jumps to 450, how's my wiring, how's my computer, we're good. Why is the signal low all the time? What do we have? A short signal. Short in the sensor itself, we're done, it needs an oxygen sensor, it's that simple. Make sense? So this is what I'm teaching you on this page on how to do that. So what if it's a Ford like what we had? What do we do? I can't, I can't disconnect the sensor and check the harness that way because Ford doesn't use a bias. So what I do on a Ford, and I have this listed later, it's called a PCM response test. We'll jump down to the page. I drew this picture for you before. Computer, sensor's out here. Disconnect the sensor. Sensor's over here. Take my body as the resistor touch battery positive with that hand and touch my pin on the harness side with that hand. <laughs> How do you like my drawing? That's pretty sweet. I should be an artist. Spaghetti art. <laughs> I got some, some jumper wires there too, maybe. What am I doing? What am I looking for? That's going into the computer, the scan tool you would have connected. Your O2 millivolt, well, it would be this signal up here that's on the scan tool. It was at 30 millivolts. When I do that test on the Ford, what did it jump up to? It was like 1,600 millivolts is what, it, what the scan tool jumped to when I did that test. Why, do you guys, do you four that were there understand why I wanted to do that test? What, what am I looking for? Change what am, in the computer. What's that? The change in the computer. I want the change to occur in the computer, and if I see the change, what's that tell me about my wiring Wire harness good. from the good. sensor to the computer? That's good. So you guys understand that even on a vehicle with no bias, I have a very fast way to verify circuit integrity 
and using my body as the resistor in this half case. Make sense? <laughs> yeah. So what I just described to you guys was on page 23, which would be 5-12 maybe for you guys, is this PCM response test. The one that I described to you is I, I simulated a rich signal, right? Why would I want to simulate a rich? Well, because my O2 signal was lean all the time on that Ford that I just mentioned to you guys. Touch one hand to battery positive, the other to the O2 signal wire. Sensor may need to be sensor may need to be plugged in for this test to work. And actually, I should also add that if the sensor is shorted internally, if the sensor is shorted internally, this may not work either. A test light may also be used. I've done that. I have some videos showing that. It's right. It's actually right here. This is a really good video to watch um, as far as this test. For you guys that weren't there, didn't see it, I want to put a note here, guys, for this. The reason I, I wrote the sensor may need to be plugged in for this test to work is the sensor ground circuit, when you disconnect the sensor, then the computer may not read properly that signal you're trying to create. That's why I wrote that, but there's another piece that we need to say for that. And this was the case on our Ford, because I tried it first plugged in and it wouldn't react. So I did my test where I'm using my body as a resistor and it didn't react, and the reason it didn't react is the sensor was shorted. That's where the test light's actually a better tool because it's a little bit more uh, pressure than through your body. But the note is this, um, a, shorted, a shorted signal circuit inside of the O2 inside of the O2 sensor will pull the voltage to ground through your body. So what, what will happen? What are you looking for when you do this test? A change. We're, we're looking for a change in the computer scan data signal wire. What won't happen if the O2 is sorted internally? A change. A change. So what will you need to do? Disconnect the O2. Disconnect the O2. Disconnect O2 and repeat test. Or in the video, use a test light. There's concern in our field as far as using a 12 volt test light and connecting to an O2 signal wire, and I get the concerns, I really do. It's a one volt circuit, right? Am I going to hurt the computer putting 12 volts to the O2 signal circuit with a test light? Uh, in theory, <laughs> but it's a practice that I have done on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cars and never ever hurt one. My uh, first exposure to this was using your body as the resistor and I was taught that that sent about one volt through the computer circuit and that your body was high enough resistance that that would, that would keep from hurting the computer. And what I found later in measuring what I'm actually applying to the computer itself, through my body I'm applying eight or nine, ten volts on that circuit. And so I was, I wouldn't say lied to, but what I was taught was actually incorrect as far as the voltage level. Because if you think about it, it would take someone who's pretty um, OCD like me that would actually measure what I'm sending to the computer. Because typically, you're just looking at a scan data response, right? You have your scanner connected, and that's going to your PCM. Those guys are talking to each other. The sensor's disconnected over here, and I'm touching, right, there. And so what am I looking at? What am I looking for? I'm looking up here. 
for a scan data change. Now, I'm not actually putting a voltmeter on here at the same time. Most people wouldn't do that. I'm not most people. I wanted to know, right? So I didn't even realize, here's my point. I didn't realize for maybe 10 years that I was overloading these circuits with more voltage than what should be there. That's number one. Uh, number two is I have seen many, many oxygen sensor wire, the heater circuit being melted and grounded together with the signal circuit from laying on the exhaust. So what did, what are we doing with the heater power wire connected to the signal wire? What are we doing all the time? What are we sending to the computer all the time? Flat 12 volts, no resistance. And you fix the wiring on these and the computer's fine. So I'm just making my point, I feel safe in doing this. It's a voltage sensing circuit that doesn't support really any current flow. I'm comfortable doing it. Agreed. Okay, so let me let me jump you over to my bike. Just give me one second to set up. All right, what we'll do first is I'm just going to use a, a regular multimeter, the digital multimeter, just to simulate maybe what you guys would be able to do with your meters. Any questions um, about anything while I'm setting up? Go ahead, Tom. You're good with the 420, you know? Okay. So, like, check the O2s and the power ground, and the power ground on both sides, and boom, both my body used it. But then we looked at it, and it was really weird because both of the uh, waveforms, it was like, it was right for upstream and downstream on both of them. Like, you had consistent voltage, lean rich, and then a flat line on the other side. Right. So you check the rear sensors, and they're both working, but it's still at 420. Right. right. You said the sensors say that it's fine. Yeah, the cat's bad. Okay. Well, how would it, if it's, you know, um, it look what, cool. what Tom's asking me, guys, and I want to make sure that that mic's picking me up. Uh, what Tom is asking me is how we can have a P0420 code and have a flat line O2 like we should have in the rear and an oscillating O2 up front and still have a bad cat. And the answer to that is uh, within the oxygen storage of the cat. This is actually something that I have listed in my book and we're gonna talk about next when we're done with the, the heater and bias circuit. Cool? And actually Shane brought one in today with a 420 code. And I hope so. And maybe we'll, we will end up doing an oxygen storage test on that. So, um, yeah, so back yeah. to this. We will talk about that, Tom. Good question. Come on. Just to show you how far and widespread this is, I was actually shocked on Friday to see a bias voltage on my bike for the oxygen sensor circuit. And I'm pretty sure that what I could tell you is, well, maybe not. I was going to say that it wouldn't be for setting the check engine light, but I'm not totally sure about that. This does have a check engine light. I think it has a check engine light. Yep, right there. Right on the corner is a symbol, just like a car. All right, now if I can remember from Friday which one my signal wire is. I think it was the gray wire, right? Oh, and something else I, I blew past on Friday that using the block ground, using my cylinder head for a ground, was a, an effective place to measure. And so that does mean that this system, this frame is grounded just like a car is. Well, at least the engine block is. All right, so how will I know which one my bias or which one my signal is is just based on the voltage level I have. My ground came off, so give me a second. What do we see? So I'm just back probing the signal wire. My black leads go into my cylinder head. And what we're seeing on the <clears throat> on the voltmeter is a 4.6 volt 
signal. How weak is that? So is it a five volt circuit that would drive a normal sensor? It's not, this would be a really weak circuit. I don't know if I can do this or not, I'll try it just to prove how weak it is. What I'll do is I'll take and touch the pin with one hand and then touch the engine block with my other hand and I believe that this is weak enough that I, I'll pull this signal down through my body. So I'm, I'll try it. I'm not totally sure it will work. But I have to get a hand on the pin at the same time that you guys are watching it. And then other hand to the block. You guys, so here's my left hand's off of it. My left hand is touching the pin. My right hand is not touching anything. And when I take my right hand and touch the cylinder head, you see what I'm doing with that? So you guys understand just with that how weak that this bias voltage is. And so it's a really good lesson on what happens to this bias whenever the sensor starts to produce its voltage, the zero to one volt. It basically follows the sensor and it's almost not even there. All right, so here's where I want you guys to pay attention and use this in the future. I made you guys do worksheets on the heater circuit, right? Yeah. Check your power, check your ground, is it pulse width modulated or not? Nice worksheet, right? You know that you can look at the scan tool and look at this bias line, start the vehicle, and within 10 to 15 seconds, if you have a working oxygen sensor heater circuit, what happens to your signal bias voltage? It drops drastically and very fast. And if it does, how is your heater circuit? Does that make sense? Yes. So we can use this as a guide to the heater circuit and not have to physically check it. So I'll, I'll start the bike real quick and what you'll see is how fast that this drops. Let's watch how fast that this signal changes. What happened to that? What happened to that bias voltage? Now watch it as it cools back off. You understand what's happening here? How's my heater circuit? Did I check it? But did I check it directly? No, but how's my heater circuit? How cool is bias voltage now? I mean, it's difficult to talk about. I get that. I understand that. There's internal workings inside the computer that are hard to visualize. But how easy is this to use? Now, if I could simulate the heater not working, I would need a diagram and figure out where the power is coming from for the O2. I'm not prepared to do that. I apologize for that part, but it's there all the time. Let's go to the graphing multimeter and I'll show you that one more time. And we can see the O2 when it becomes active. I'll set this to a 5 volt because of where we are with the signal. But I mean, think about that for a minute. I mean, how much would that mess you up if you're setting up your scope and you know you're looking at an O2 sensor signal and it should be zero to one volt, and so you set your scales maybe to two volts or one volt, and, and what it shows you is nothing, it's off the screen. And the vehicle's not even running, engine's not even running, that would throw you for a loop for sure. So five volt bias that this bike is using. That's how fast that warms up. Say between my two cursors right there. And I don't know what that number is. I guess I can show you that number. 
between the cursors is a time, a delta time of 2.72 seconds. Can you guys see where I'm at, right? I can't point to it because it changes it. So I'm looking at cursor one, cursor two, see down the bottom? And then it has the voltage readings in yellow, and then the time readings would be in white. And we're looking at 2.72 seconds. So that would be what a computer system is using for time to activity. You guys understand the time to activity test that say Chrysler does now on their oxygen sensors. This is your heater circuit test. If the heater circuit's not functioning, how much longer does it take to go from hot to cold or cold to hot, the sensor itself? Now we're relying on exhaust gases to heat it. It takes a lot longer period of time, okay? And so that's where you'll get O2 sensor heater circuit fault codes is from this. Here's something else that'll mess you up. You have an oxygen sensor heater circuit fault specific to the oxygen sensor. You do your heater circuit tests and what you find, good amperage, good power, good ground. And what are you saying to yourself? Why is this setting an oxygen sensor heater fault? You guys understand the question? Okay, so let me ask you for an answer. What, why <laughs> is it setting a heater circuit fault? It's not heating up fast enough. The heater's fine. The heater's fine. Why are we setting a heater fault? It's taking too long. Don't know if I can draw on this, I'll try. The computer is monitoring the signal circuit, right? What if the signal circuit, which is this, I drew it as an open. What if it's open? What if the signal circuit inside the sensor is open? What does the computer see on this signal wire all the time? If this is a Chrysler or my bike, what does it see? Five volts. Five volts all the time. So when we start the vehicle and it does its time to activity test, which is what we're looking at on the screen right here, does it ever drop? No, when the heater is functional, and it is, so internal to this, the heater circuit is working fine, it's heating the sensor, but remember on this kind of heater circuit, it's externally powered and it's externally grounded, the computer doesn't watch the heater. So what code does it set? Because the signal circuit never moves, it sets a heater circuit fault. Do you guys understand that this is just a bad O2 sensor? And back in the day, this used to bother me, and, but I knew if I would change the sensor, it would fix the problem. I just didn't understand why. So that's what the parts changers would do, and in this case, you would be winning because you have an O2 heater code. What do you do? You change the sensor and fix the problem. The thinking guy has an O2 heater code. He checks the heater circuit and finds that amperage is normal, voltage is normal, and he really can't justify changing the sensor, but he does anyway and fixes the car. So, a lesson on that. Do you think that this Harley Davidson is using something similar yes. as this Chrysler circuit that I just drew? Yes. I believe so. I'm not totally sure about where the power feed is coming from for this heater, but I do know that it's there when I turn the key on or ignition on. So, I don't know if it's computer controlled or not. But I do know that the heater circuit is exactly, exactly like Chrysler's. How cool is that? Think about that. That's super cool. This is a 2016 Harley Davidson, and I'm talking about the same stuff that I would be on a, on a Chrysler system. Okay? Bias voltage. Questions? You guys understand again how weak this signal is. Did I emphasize that well enough?
cold sensor, right? Sensor. Let's watch that for a second. It will stay low for a lot longer this time. I'm going to need to scale this. Let's go back to five so we can watch that better. What's the sensor doing right now? All right, so do you understand that a cold oxygen sensor has more resistance than a hot one does. Do you understand that that bias voltage is there all the time? It's just being pulled to ground by the sensor. Everybody comfortable with that? This four and a half volts, by the way, I'm pretty sure that it's a five volt bias. Why are we reading 4.6? Because my meter itself is pulling some of it to ground. Okay? depending on the meter you're using, it may pull to ground even more. So that's an important piece for guys in the future is maybe you're measuring the exact same circuit on the exact same bike, a 2016 Harley, and you're reading three volts on your multimeter. And I'm reading 4.6. Why is your multimeter reading three volts? Different multimeters, different meters have different internal resistance. If I would connect my Pico to this, the Pico has less resistance on the meter side than the typical multimeter does. I believe the Pico is 2 mega ohms of impedance rather than 10 mega, mega ohms. So a GM, for example, I know this much, 450 millivolt bias. When I connect my Vantage Pro to it, I'll read 400 millivolts, not 450. Where the other 50 millivolts go? Meter itself. If I connect my Pico to that, I'll read 200 millivolts on the same circuit. Where'd the other 250 millivolts go? Through my meter. You guys understand that? I was teaching this once with a class and we had eight meters connected to it. To, I had a, a, a switch box and we had eight scopes connected and everyone was playing with the live vehicle. Worked fine, but what did we not see at all on a GM Bio. oxygen sensor? There was no bias at all because it was being pulled to ground through the meters. How weak is the bias voltage? Very weak. Do you see the voltage still climbing as I'm talking? And it will continue to climb as the sensor cools off. If I had uh, some ice, I could put ice on the sensor and we could cool it off very quickly and watch that signal rise. I don't know if that's very healthy for the heater circuit internally, uh, but we could do that. Okay, cool. Bias voltage heater circuit all in one conversation, right? Pretty, pretty cool. The heater circuit tests, we've done some worksheets on it already. We actually talked about it in section three with power and ground side switching, haven't we? Isn't it the same thing? Switch the power or switch the ground side. Pulse width modulated is another option, okay? When you guys come back from break, what we wanna talk about is that oxygen storage test that you talked about, Tom. We'll cover that when you guys come back.